We all have a spirit, we all have a soul within us. And as I've traveled around the world teaching meditation, the people that I meet at the meditation classes, for one reason or another, have become interested in meditation, have become aware of the inner dimension and they want to explore it. So when you find that moment comes forward within your own life, when you find that inner urge to learn about yourself or to grow spiritually, then my suggestion is to really honor that, be grateful that this moment has dawned, and be really sincere in putting as much energy as you can into it. In my lectures and books, when I talk about spiritual growth, I like to explain that learning meditation or growing spiritually is not like learning mathematics. When you go to a math course, you learn formulas, you memorize information, and you, you create a body of knowledge that you then call yours. In spirituality, the goal is really to get in touch with your essence, the essence that has always been there and will always be there. So in many ways, meditation is about letting go of our thoughts, letting go of our ego, going into a type of free fall where we trust in our spirit and our soul. One of the things I read, actually before I met Sri Chinmoy, was that when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And when I read that, I really didn't believe it because I didn't think the universe worked in such a way so that when I had the aspiration or the desire for a teacher, that the universe would provide it. But I found that that is absolutely the way the universe works. So what we ask for is what we'll receive. So when you have that spiritual inclination or that spiritual yearning, if you give it 100% of your energy, then the universe will provide you the means by which you can continue to put that focus there. So rather than putting the cart before the horse, put your spirituality first, and then everything else will fall into place. As we fall or, or move into that part of ourself, that that's the automatic fulfillment. So it's not that we have to create something in our spiritual life, but rather that we just have to get in tune with who and what we actually are. Feet flat on the ground is nice in terms of it keeps you uh, grounded into the earth. The other element of si sitting is that if your knees, and here we get a little more into the hatha yoga or the um, physical elements of meditation, but if your knees are above your hips, it tends to put a lot of pressure on your spine. So on this particular chair, I sit in such a way so that my knees are um, below my hips, so uh, distribute the weight a little more evenly. So if I was going to sit and meditate in this chair, this is the basic posture I would do it in. But again, the posture, the key thing is just that your spine is straight, that you're comfortable, and ultimately that you're comfortable enough, you're not falling asleep, but you're able to forget about your body and move your awareness into your inner dimensions. You're letting go of body awareness. Then with meditation, the next step is to manifest that energy, that meditative energy, in your day-to-day -day life, in and through your body. So the body plays its role in manifesting the energy.